Welcome to another episode of Dining at Disney, your ultimate source for delicious discussion about dining at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. I am Kristen, foodie, travel guru, and with me is my awesome co-host all the way out in California, Bubba Alvarez. He's a former cast member, a restaurant guru, and a future Club 33 member. How you doing, Bubba? Keeping my fingers crossed still for that. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing hot, but excellent. However, it's hot over here in California. Uh, so we're just trying to stay cool. I don't know how it is on the East Coast, but it's a scorcher here. In fact, at Disneyland just a couple of days ago, it was 110, 115. Ooh. So and there was nobody at the park, they said. I mean, I was looking at pictures of empty even the Gibson Girl ice cream place was was empty because it was just so hot to go to the park. So we're trying to keep cool out here in California. <laughs> wow. That, yeah. That's pretty hot. Mm -hmm. We've been hot and humid in Nashville. We've been actually hotter than it's been in Orlando, Florida, uh, but not that hot. Oh, yeah. Which but, is good considering I work with kids. <laughs> we've We have cut our trips to the park. Unless it's been when we've been to the pool, we've had to cut the yeah. work because of it being too hot, too humid, and the kids, you know, their faces are turning like tomato red after about 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's understandable here. That's that's a, that's a Monday here, so. <laughs> okay, so today we have got a big discussion with the opening of Pixar Pier. We're going to be talking about the eateries there, as well as Pixar Fest, which is going on now through, is it September 3rd? Yes. Is that right? Okay. September 3rd. Okay. So, Bubba, I know you just recently visited Disneyland and checked out Pixar Pier. So, I am going to let you take the floor. Yes. we. I went the day after it opened, uh, and... Huge crowds. I was. I could only do the park just for a couple of hours that morning, and then we had to go uh, to another town near LA. But yeah, I got two hours in the park, and everything looks amazing. By the way, in the new Pixar Pier area, the Incredicoaster coaster was amazing. In fact, on the Source Radio, uh, I think I on the uh, Facebook page I shared a video. I don't know if it showed up of me riding the Incredicoaster for the first time. So that was a lot of great stuff. A lot of new um, eateries also. There's three brand new eateries that opened up in Pixar Pier and a brand new rethemed restaurant, which was the Cove Bar. And now it is called the Gas Lamp Lounge, I believe. Yes. Um, so I did not get a chance to eat there because, like I said, I went park opening. The park opened at 8. I was there from 8 to 10, and the restaurant opened at 11. But great reviews right now from the uh, from the restaurant. I did have friends uh, eat there that weekend. There's even a little secret room that you could go in and dine. You can reserve it and dine in, and it's a special way you open the door. Uh, which is really cool. A cast member helps. Yeah, it's just like a little secret room, but um, a great overall place. I, once I dine there, I'm going to give you a full review. I just don't want to, you know, say like, oh, I'm sure it's going to be great. You know, I want to give my own honest opinion about it. But the Cove Bar was great. I mean, that's where we met you and Al John, yeah. and the lobster nachos and the mixed drinks there are amazing. So I expect the same next time I go dine there. It was where uh, Cove Bar and Ariel's Grotto was. So now that's all rethemed to the gas lamp lounge, and I can't wait to try it next time I go. So we'll talk about the new eateries that did pop up. And what's great about Pixar Fest that is going on at the Disneyland Resort till September 3rd is that they give you, you can get one of these little food guide books. I don't know if it's backwards. It is on my end, but I'm hoping it shows up right on your end. It shows right, um, up, uh, right yeah. on the list. It gives you so, your mirror view. <laughs> yeah, my mirror view. So like I said, now through September 3rd, and this has details on where each Pixar themed food item is. And you can also check it, a little checkbox next to each item. So that way you can go through the summer picking your way through trying different things. So uh, even at Disneyland too, because they changed uh, pizza plant or pizza port 
to pizza, Alien Pizza Planet now. So that's rethemed. And um, as of now, no, because they put a banner over the original sign, like a, a you know, just one of them like type banners that you could just take off and take on. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's just uh, probably just through Pixar Fest. So, but the retheme around there is amazing. So I, when I went for Star Wars uh, day, the Star Wars party that they had at Disneyland, Pixar, ooh, Pixar Fest was already going on. And sorry, that show up on my end? <laughs> or did, did you hear that on my end? No, I did not. Okay, good. Yeah, big old chime on my computer. So we went for st the Star Wars party and Pixar Fest was already going on in Disneyland. So we went to uh, Pizza Planet to go eat. And I did have, what is it called? Their unbelievable pizza, which is called the Supernova Pizza. And it's basically a cheeseburger pizza. So picture throwing a cheeseburger on top of a pizza. You have sliced hamburger patties, pickles, onions, uh, lettuce, tomato, and then all the sauces you want. It's uh, ketchup, mustard, mayo, Thousand Island, and the sesame seed crust at the end. Because, yeah, you know, you have to have a sesame seed bun for a burger, right? And I was very skeptical about it, but having eaten it, I would get that again and again and again. I was very amazed by the taste, the flavor. Um, it was nice and fresh, too. Uh, that was one of the best pizzas I've had there. Well, I usually don't get pizza there. I get pasta because it, it's a good meal to fill you up when you're at Disneyland, and it's not too expensive. Uh, but I definitely recommend the pizza. That was the Supernova pizza. I also did get the Alien Macaroon, uh, which was light and hair. You know, it was the shape of the alien head, and it had, like, a blackberry filling in the middle. And you couldn't go wrong with that macaroon. It was uh, it was delish, and they had the parfait, which is the same uh, same shape as the alien head. That uh, I'll get, I'm not too uh, you know too happy about the taste and, and the texture of a part that parfait. Maybe just because it wasn't cold enough for me. I had some friends order it, and they, you know they let me try it, and we all had the same reaction, just like eh, this uh, wasn't that flavorful to us. Yeah. So. Uh, that was over at Pizza Planet, and there's so many other places, but we'll go back to Pixar Pier. The three new eateries that they have, uh, the ice cream parlor is now called the Adorable Snowman Frosted Treats. So you remember the movie Monsters, Inc. meeting Abominable, and what did he serve up? He served yellow snow cones. So why not have yellow ice cream, and it's lemon-flavored ice cream. Delish, uh, I had the parfait, actually, I had the parfait from there, and that is uh, lemon ice cream with a blue raspberry slush in the middle. So you have two, a layer at the bottom and a layer on top of the lemon ice cream and the uh, blueberry slush in the middle, and with the cherry on top, that was one of the best things I've had. I highly recommend that, and they also have the snow-capped lemon uh, ice cream cone, nice real tall cone, it's about that tall, and they snow cap it with a, um, I believe it's uh, kind of like a white frosting, and it's so perfect on top of the uh, ice cream, and it, you know, it doesn't, it leaks down just a little bit, and then it stops and it hardens. Uh, that was a perfect touch to the ice cream, and that was great too. I highly recommend those types of ice creams. Also, uh, if you go down a little bit more toward the Incredicoaster, Coaster, they have a new chicken place called the Poultry Palace. Uh, it's in the shape of the actual box they serve you the chicken meals in, the family meals. And um, you could get a jumbo smoked turkey leg. A lot of people were getting the chicken drumstick box, which is three pieces of chicken, coleslaw, um, and I believe a bag of chips. I'm not sure about that. And it's served in a nice uh, box that is the shape of the actual poultry palace that's right there. Um, you can also get drinks too from there. A little bit down the ways more was Senior Buzz's Churros. I did not get to this one because it was a long line, but you can try the Cinnamon Sugar Galaxy Churro or the Caliente Churro, which everyone says is does have a great kick to it. I think it's almost like a really, really, really hot tamale, like the candies you have. Picture that, but just like more, even more intense flavor. And then uh, I was a little bit disappointed I didn't go to this. 
Ja um, I don't see it on here, but it's a uh, Jack Jack. He has a little cookie cart right there by the Incredicoaster. The line was insane at park opening because the reviews from this place from the parties before were just phenomenal. So everybody wanted to go. You know, they had little uh, D23 had a chance to go. But if you're not D23, yeah, D23 mem members had a party there also um club 33 members had a party the night before like two nights before their own personal party but everybody said one thing is that jack jack cookies were amazing and you get a nice big soft baked jack jack cookie mm. um and you know everybody wanted it for breakfast and i'm like man the line's too long it stretched all the way down behind if you know disney california they're doing construction on the carousel still so but it wrapped all the way around there from the back towards the bathroom. So I'm like, oh, I couldn't wait that long, unfortunately. Hold on, I dropped my guide real quick. And uh, so those were the th uh, three new eateries. Oh, wait, nope, there is one more. Um, if you like hot dogs, there it is right there. Um, corn, oh, no, well, corn Dog Castle, of course, they got a uh, something new also, the temper, I want to say this, temperamental taste shifting corn dog, which is basically three flavors in one you got two dogs different dogs one below one in the at the top and then in the middle it's uh like a fried cheese curd and uh i'm, I'm hearing a lot of great things about that one um that sounds and, interesting. Um, yeah uh there's jack jack cookies on them so they have the incredi cookie or jack jack cookie num nums which is little bite-sized cookies you know for the kids but the the big giant jack jack cookie that's everything baked in that way was it looked like just heaven and i'm like i wish i could just get in this line and get it so next time i will get that and inside out they have angry dog the statue in front of if you remember the angry uh character from inside out it's basically he's holding up a giant hot dog and flaming it for you on that the, the statue is cool so they have the slightly annoyed dog which is a very spicy angry hot dog from what I'm hearing. And if you can, you can get it with hot fries, which they sprinkle, um, I know like hot chili powder on top. And you know, that's that's a great way to get your spices in. So those are the three new eateries that are open. Um, we are still waiting for uh, Bing Bong's Candy Palace, as I remember, Bing Bong Sweet Stuff, yes. Which you've seen a lot of pictures uh, posted on the blog and stuff of their cake pops. Uh, they should be opening hopefully within the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping by mid-August they open. And uh, you know, they got a lot of stuff. A Wally cake pop, Joy, Fear cake pop, uh, a grape soda cake pop. I mean, everything you could think of type cake pop you can get. They have strawberry cream fudge, orange cream fudge and the bing bong apple. I think everybody's seen the picture of this online, which is a giant bing bong candied apple. If not, we'll find it for you and we'll post it on the, uh, our Facebook page, which looks uh, delicious. So I'm hoping that opens in mid-August. We don't have a definite date on it. Um, so we'll just wait and see how that goes. But so far, a lot of positive reviews are coming out from the new Pixar pier area, the eateries around there. And overall, the Pixar Fest around Disney, Cal or Disney California and Disneyland. Uh, the food, like I said, he, he, they made a whole book about the new foods that they have there. So, I'll tell you, I bet that rainbow unicorn apple is going to <laughs> sell like hotcakes. Yes. No, that uh, just, and I've seen the picture of that too. Just, I mean, every I'm, girl I'm, who goes to Disneyland is going to want that apple. Yes, let me see a picture of it. So it's kind of like that, which is a little blurry look of it, but yeah. But it looks delicious. I mean, you can't go wrong. So some of this other stuff that I did try, I did try um, the uh, Ellie Special, which is at Carnation Cafe. And that is a TV dinner style dinner that you can get. It comes with a grilled juicy bone-in thick cut pork chop spiced diced apples on top of it and then you get uh, caramelized peas and carrots uh, you get a good piece of cornbread with butter on top and then right in the middle for dessert you get a chocolate molted lava cake and okay so <laughs> did they serve it in an old style tv tray yes they do not old style it's a ceramic but it's just like a TV dinner, like you got a, the squares. 
in each uh, in each uh, you know thing. You got the big square for your main dish, and that's uh, the pork chop is on top of a pile of red skinned potatoes. But oh, I'm so glad I got it. It's definitely one of the hits in my opinion at Car for the entrees that are out in the park. Um, there's a couple other ones, but this one was just. I mean, it's. Uh, I believe the price was around, you know, $17, $18, uh, maybe a little bit more. But it was filling. It was delicious. I wish the malted cake was cooked a little bit more on mine. But other people have said, no, there's, it was cooked perfect. So maybe I just got a bad one. I don't know. I still ate it <laughs> because you can't go wrong with chocolate. <laughs> I still ate it. Uh, but it definitely hit the spot. I, I don't even think I finished it. So, I mean, if I can't finish it, yeah, that's it's a good size. So um, that was one of the hits that I had. And then I believe I had one more thing. And no, I cannot find it. Because I went, I've, I've probably been to the park around three times since uh, Pixar Fest started. And I've, had, I've tried to eat as much as I can. And you know what? Just The selections were just endless when we first went. And there's there was so much stuff that there's line, yeah, there's lines for everything too, like all the specialty stuff. There's an up themed donut also, which is a big, it looks like a big giant eclair, but there's balloon candies on top of it and a big pile of balloon candies, like, and they're pulling up the house on the, on the donut. That was a huge hit. Um, and oh, I, I every time there's lines for that, as soon as they go on sale, they're just, they sell out within just a couple minutes, um, you know, and they have different stuff that kids will like too. Just by reading this at Lucky Fortune Cookery, they have the Harry House and Chilled Noodle Salad, which changes colors. It goes from like a purple reddish noodle. And then I believe once you dump the sauce on it, it turns blue, just it turns like a deep blue. And, uh, you know, the kids are going gaga for that. I heard it's really good too. Um, yeah, so the donut, I did find the donut. It's called the Dawn Up, and I like how they named that. And if you can't tell, it's just the house with with balloons pulling it up on there. Um, and the desserts are amazing, too. Uh, they have the Up Eclair uh, over at Jolly Holiday Cafe. The Gibson Girl has a salted caramel pecan sundae. I mean, you Everything you got. Schmozies has a monster mint and chip shake and a whoopie eye pie, which is uh, kind of like a smaller macaroon version of the little green alien one, but it's a Mike Wazowski head. And, uh, you know, just if you go to the park, you go to Disneyland, you definitely have to have a plan of what you want to eat right now for Pixar Fest. So I highly recommend, you know, taking the time to look at what do we want to eat, what do we want to try. Um, you know, and like I said, some of the popular stuff will have lines like Jack Jack's uh, Cookie Palace or cookies and uh, uh, the churro card. Senior bus churro card was a long line when I went over there, too. So just plan for those. Ga la ga the gas lamp lounge, that's always going to be a line now. It's just the popular for the local APs. But so you just want to get there early to get a spot in line. You might have to wait an hour, maybe up to an hour and a half. But wow. it'll be worth it. Yeah, it'll be worth it once you dine there from what everybody says. Um, yeah. Now, I'm going to say the one thing is, after looking at that book, you've got seven pages of food. One, that two, is a lot of food. three, four, five, six, seven pages. Yeah. Yes. Seven pages of food that you can check off. And it's, it's, it's various. Pixar movies too. I was very excited. And of course, being that this is my favorite Pixar movie, the Ratatouille is what I would have to do. And um, from looking at it on the, on the guide, it says it is Cafe Orleans, which I really like. Yes. It's three course prefix menu. And it says for the starter, they got a specialty cheese flight. The entree is shrimp Ratatouille. Is it Bayaldi? Uh, it's yeah, it's B Y A L D I. Bialdi sounds like yes. And then and the then the dessert just looks amazing. <laughs> very stuffed beignets a la mode. Yes. Oh my gosh. 
reservations, highly recommended for that too, especially Cafe Orleans. That's becoming a very popular restaurant also. Every time we walk, we go, we're like, we're not accepting walk-ups, reservation only. That used to just be Blue Bayou, but now that's now that's Cafe Orleans now. So, you know, recommend reservations, get those right away. Uh, but I, I would love to try, I never had Ratatouille. I've, I've never had it. I don't even think I've ever seen a dish, a Ratatouille dish except from the movie, that's about it. Yeah. And it looks just like the one from the movie too, by the way, <laughs> how it's all except nice and round. <laughs> so um, I, I just wanna try that. Even over at uh, you know Paradise Garden Grill, there's a lot of, uh, you know, that's like one of the big areas where you wanna go eat too, and all that is themed cocoa. So you have the Yucatan inspired, I want to say this right, and I'm Spanish. I'm Mexican too, and I can't even pronounce this. Vaporcitos, uh, the mole verde con pollo, tortas de patas, papas. Sorry, uh, they have the uh, yeah. The rest of these are hot. A Mexican hot chocolate. So one of my uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Oh. One of my friends had this uh, posted it online, and he said he got about three cups of it because it was so amazing. He said he loves Mexican hot chocolate. And that was one of the best Mexican hot chocolates he's ever had. I don't know why it's uh, what it is, but he showed all three cups empty, saying like, <laughs> hands down, one of the best drinks I've had. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, luckily I have a lot of friends who've been going past couple of weeks and showing off their food and I always ask them, you know, like, what did you think of it? Uh, you know, uh, tell me what you can, you know, something, give me something. Uh, one of the dishes I think I have right here was the uh, Pixar play parade picnic style lunch so if you want to watch this is a reservation one too it will it is a little bit extra but it's it is a picnic style type uh meal which you get fried chicken a watermelon salad macaroni salad um and uh fresh green uh vegetables and a dessert that's also uh you can order that i don't have the price on it right here but if you get that, you have reserved seating for the uh, Pixar Play Parade, which is the um, um, the parade that was at Disneyland, which they moved down over to uh, Disney California, which just left my head. The Paint the Night, thank you. Paint the Night Parade, it moved down to uh, Disney California, and they put a brand new uh, incredible float in the parade just for Pixar uh, Fest, and it looks amazing. Okay, so I know you checked out some of the merchandise. Oh, yeah, I got a couple things here that I will. One thing that is not Pixar that I will show off right now, and I'm very happy. I actually posted this online on our Facebook page the day it came out because I knew this was going to be a big hit. This has nothing to do with Pixar. This actually has to do with Marvel, and it is an Infinity Gauntlet sipper. So... Your hand, so awesome. look at, I mean, it's hollow. You, there's a Disney sticker right inside there. I didn't, I've never noticed the Disney sticker inside. So, <laughs> yes, and you put your hand in it, you hold it right here. Is your where your drink goes, and you just put your top on, and you just walk to the park with your sipper like that. That's crazy. All in the infinity stones. And That's yeah, so this was cool. a this was a big hit and sold out within days from coming out. Luckily, my friend got one. They did resell them again, but once again, they sold out within a couple days. I don't know if they will bring these back. I'm hoping so when more of the Marvel stuff starts happening because Bugs Land will be closing at the end of the summer to make way for more Marvel attractions and shows in that area. So. Oh, this is just amazing. I love this thing. And you know, hopefully they'll bring these back. Now back to Pixar. The sought after little green alien buckets that everybody was going for. I could not get my hands on one of these things at all. I've tried friends. I tried contacts. I couldn't. Finally, my friend Dinah, which much appreciated, she waited two hours in line and got me the coveted little green alien popcorn bucket. Yes. Why did they make these things like 
there's so few of them and they know they're gonna sell out of them i i don't know this is just for annual pass holders that's why i mean that's the thing it's for annual pass holders i don't know if you can see the button or see the little logo but this was one of the refillable popcorn buckets that they did have um it's not going on anymore but you buy this you can fill it up for a dollar anytime you're in the park and i'm so happy she did get me one because i love out of all the Pixar movies, Toy Story 2 is my favorite. I don't know why part two is just that one is. <laughs> um, but uh, So we got the a little green alien bucket. Now these, they have on sale now at the park. So if you do visit the park now, between now and hopefully the end of September 3rd, they will still have these in the park. You have your Mike Wazowski sipper cup, which there's a straw that goes right here, which I don't have. And it's pretty cool. Uh -huh. It has a little stand on it, too, which, you know, I thought, why would they have a little stand on it? And then they have the popcorn bucket of Sully, which yeah. is very, really big, too. About the same size as the uh, uh, little green alien bucket. And it opens from the back, like so. And so when I was wondering, why do they have these big red things on them? It's because they go together. There's a little slot right here, and there's a little yeah. thing right here. And so when you put it down, they lock like that, and you basically have Aww. that. I like that. That is very cool. That's definitely a cool thing. Yeah, a nice feature that they did with these bu with these buckets. So instead of buying one, they're gonna they're trying to make you buy two. So and everybody smart. can this, right? Yeah, that's smart. So these were the sought after Pixar items. I did grab something a little bit smaller. Well, actually my wife did. It doesn't fit my head, but you know, I did wear this the day of the big Pixar pier opened when I went. And it's a little light head alien, little green alien head, which lights up. There's a button back here, which you can hit, turn off, turn on. The eyes move as your head moves, sort of. So see how the eyes move. That's cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit my head. Kept falling down the day of, so I'm like, I'm going to stop wearing these. Uh, <laughs> but the merchandise, I mean, like with this book, like I said, there's seven pages of food. There's a full page of merchandise. Actually, yeah, a full page of all the merchandise that they're selling. Shirts, hats, little ears. I mean, you name it, they'll have it. <clears throat> and then um, the uh, couple other the page, two, the last two pages are... Uh, maps so that way you know where each eatery is in each park so you don't get lost finding your way well where can i go get the churro where can i go get the noodles um yeah and you can do what i do highlight your must must get items in the book yeah lamp light lounge see i've been saying the name wrong all day all all the show i've been saying the name wrong so it's lamp light lounge yes so the interest that they do give with it. Um, a stylish, fun place to hang out with the whole family. The lounge will be serving a playfully presented California casual gastro pub cuisine and unique signature cocktails. And that is open for the public. So it's definitely in full effect. I can't wait to go back hopefully in the next couple of weeks and try a lot of food. It's just last time I went, I was at Disneyland for two hours the night before and then like till park closing. And then the next morning I was there park opening for California Adventure. Just try to get as much Pixar stuff as I could in my system, yeah. which which was enough. So um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll see. Well, it sounds like you enjoyed getting to check it out and amazing food items and a lot of food items to enjoy. <sighs> yes, definitely a lot. Good job, Disney. <laughs> I think that wraps us up. What do you think? Yeah, it's a mouth. It's have not doing a show in a while. I know. <coughs> it's I a do mouthful. Plan on getting uh, the images from that book up on the website, hopefully later this week. I will do that. I will do that tonight. Uh, for those of you that are new to the Dining at Disney channel, make sure you like this video you can also click below subscribe 
uh, click that notification bell. So whenever we do new videos, which we're going to try and do, do these every Monday night, if we can, at least for right now. And uh, yeah, that way you'll know what's going on. And when we go live and you can watch along, um, I do want to mention that right now we do have a promotional partner. Um, this company is called Cutwater Spirits. Uh, those of you out in California may have heard of it because it is located in San Diego. Nice. Uh, Cutwater is going to be bringing their spirits to the Disney parks. Uh, this is the mild Bloody Mary mix. They make all of their own uh, liquors as well as their mixes. So everything is made in-house. Uh, canned cocktails are absolutely amazing. This is the Bloody Mary. Uh, they also have that's going to be available, at least I know for sure in Orlando. They have their rum and ginger. There's a rum and cola, as well as my favorite, which is their gin and tonic. And it's got a, uh, some fresh cucumber flavors to it and stuff like that. But um, you have two of these drinks out of a can and you are done for the night. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I can't wait to try. these are not <laughs> weak cocktails by any means and they are absolutely delicious. So uh, if you haven't checked out Cutwater Spirits before, definitely do so. And if you're in Orlando, check the menus at the restaurants and see who's carrying that while you're there. Um, Bubba, where can everybody find you? You can find me on my Instagram page, which I've been using, uh, trying to been using a lot, especially when I go to the park, that's the main thing I use. So you can find me at big underscore Bubba underscore B, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter with that same name. Uh, and just check out all my pictures that I took from the, my last visit, uh, a couple other food items that I might not have mentioned that I tried. I think, yeah, so check it out and let me know what you think. And of course, you can find us on diningatdisney.com, social media, it's Dining at Disney. So we would love for you to follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Of course, we're going to try and do weekly shows right here on YouTube for you. And you'll be able to catch the audio version of that on Stitcher as well as Apple Podcasts. Um, if you like this, we're going to try and do shorter formats, so like 15 to 30 minutes. If you guys like that, please comment and let us know. You can always email us at podcast at dining at Disney dot com. Uh, until next time, I'm Kristen, and with me is Bubba and Bob. Bye, guys.